This is Echo 3, and let's discuss how to make our own F-35B style aircraft. As far as aircraft go, this is definitely one of the more difficult builds that I have ever attempted using the Breaking Ground DLC. In general, I'm going to try and get the rough shape of the F-35 correct, however, more importantly, I'm going to go for the functionality of the aircraft. One of the more unique features with this VTOL aircraft is the lifting fans that are mounted just behind the cockpit. For the sake of simplicity, I will just be mounting the lifting fans inside of the payload bay. This entire build will be entirely stock and the DLCs. No modded parts are going to be used. Although I do believe that the mod Airplane Plus has some lifting fan parts. If you are able and open to the idea of using mods, then that might be an easier route than what I am doing. This plane needs to be able to function well both in vertical flight and horizontal flight. So I will be spending quite a bit of time in order to get my wings positioned correctly. If you would like more details about how to build an aircraft in Kerbal Space Program, I do have a tutorial covering the basics of airplane design. In this particular case, I'm designing a more fighter-style aircraft. That means a high emphasis will be placed on maneuverability. And to do that, as a general rule, the center of aerodynamic pressure will be very close to the center of mass of the aircraft and you can generally expect the wings to be shorter and stubbier. Now the F-35 is a little bit different as far as fighters go, as less emphasis was placed on maneuverability and more on stealth. If you'd like to make an aircraft that is very focused on maneuverability, you may want to try making something like the F-22, the Su-27, or the Saab-35. To make things just a little easier to work on the main wing, I have offset it by quite a bit away from the fuselage, I will be using the offset tool and moving it back, but for now, it just makes things easier to work on. As I work with the aerodynamic control surfaces, I use the pop-up menu to set which control surfaces have roll, pitch, and yaw authority. So for example, the horizontal stabilizers mounted in the back will only have pitch control. Now I'm placing an R121 turboshaft engine on the payload bay. And like the wings, I will be using the offset tool to position it so I can work on it a little easier. The turboshaft engines are very powerful. So for almost every application, you can reduce the motor size. I'm reducing it down to 15%, but I probably could even have gone lower. Reducing the motor size also reduces its mass. Attached to the turboshaft engine are eight fan blades. Almost all of the vertical lift will be produced by the fan blades themselves. Next, I copy the rotor assembly and attach it directly underneath the first one. This is because the attachment node on top of the rotor rotates. Once attached, I then move and rotate the second rotor into position. I'm having the second one stick up just a little bit higher than the first one. One of the rotors and its blades will be switched over to run counterclockwise. This means that the torque generated from each rotor will be canceled out. Then, I move the entire assembly down into the payload bay. And, as a reminder, I'm just going for the functionality of the F-35, not the exact look. I probably could have spent another hour or so tweaking the exact aesthetics of the craft. I'm removing the turboshaft engines from the brake action group. Otherwise, they won't rotate when I activate the wheel brakes. Instead, I'm making their brakes work with the abort action group. The rotor blades themselves, I'm assigning roll and pitch control. I'm making sure the deployment angle is set to zero and that they are deployed. That way, when I start the rotors up, the fan blades will be producing no lift. Once the craft is on the runway, I can adjust the exact deployment angle of the blades and affect how the craft lifts up. I'm adding a cubic strut to the hinge I placed on the back of the craft. This serves no practical purpose, it's just going to affect how the craft looks. It just serves as an attachment point for this nose cone. I'm going to copy that and put that same thing in front of the hinge as well. This just serves to cover up the hinge and make the craft look a little better. I switch the move tool over to absolute mode and angle snap to make sure that things are perfectly straight. Once the nose cones are exactly where I want them, I'm going to finally attach an engine to this thing. The Panther engine is going to be an excellent choice for this aircraft. This engine has thrust vectoring 
That makes it very useful for keeping the craft stable, especially during vertical liftoff. It's an especially good engine for making fighter-style aircraft because the thrust vectoring makes the craft even more maneuverable. I'm just moving these pieces together a little bit more, clipping them in so it looks better. The Panther engine is unique among the stock engines because it has an afterburner mode. I like to bind an action group to switch modes on the engine, usually R for the RCS because I'm not using that for a fighter aircraft. Now I'm going to set up the specifics with the hinge. It only needs 90 degrees of travel, so I'm limiting the hinge to that. I'm also setting the dampening down to zero. That will make the hinge less floppy. Now, the main engine can transition between horizontal and vertical flight. Speaking of vertical, the craft needs a couple vertical stabilizers. I'm just going to use these winglets instead of getting really fancy with the wing pieces. These wing pieces have a control surface built into them, and I will assign it just yaw authority. I've seen a lot of players online ask why their plane can't fly straight, and I'll see on the pictures that it doesn't have vertical stabilizers. One doesn't always need vertical stabilizers, like you can make a flying wing, it's just tricky. Now it's time to add a couple of the Cal 1000 pieces to the craft. Each of the Cal 1000s will be bound to one of the translation control groups. In my case, I'm using translate up down and translate left right. There are a lot of moving parts on this aircraft. On the first Cal 1000, I am binding the deployment angle of the rotor blades to it. If you are playing on a console, you will need to bind the authority limit instead. Because this Cal 1000 is bound to a translation control group, by moving those keys I will adjust how much lift force is produced by the rotor blades. The Cal 1000 is set to have the rotor deploy angle go from 0 to 3 degrees. That will give me very fine control over the exact angle of those rotor blades. On the second Cal 1000, I'm assigning it the deploy angle of the payload bay. I'm also assigning to it the torque limit of the rotors themselves. Basically, this will turn on and off the rotors. I'm also assigning to it the thrust limit to the main engine. Basically, in vertical flight mode, the engine won't need quite as much thrust. Not something you have to do, it just made it a little easier to fly. And finally, the target angle of the hinge that I put in the back is also assigned to that Cal 1000. So for the payload bay, I'll have it go from something like 0 to 60%. Honestly, the second number just needs to be bigger than 0. Somewhere around 0.5 seconds into the play position, I'm adding a third number. This is going to be my almost all the way open. I'm going to be doing basically the same thing with the turboshaft engines, except rather than setting them at 60%, I'll have them go all the way up to 100%. I probably could have just copied the exact same values over from the cargo bay, because the turboshaft engines don't need 100% torque. But do make sure you copy the values from one turboshaft engine over to the other. For the Panther engine, I'm going to drop its thrust limiter to something like 80% when it switches over into vertical flight mode. And for the hinge, it will just go from 0 to 90 degrees. That may seem like quite a bit for one Cal 1000, however, that makes the transition to vertical flight a lot easier. This means that if you are playing with a standard keyboard layout, your right hand will be able to handle the entire transition. And finally, let's go ahead and add some landing gear to this plane. Make sure landing gear are placed on the aircraft perfectly straight, and that your front and back gear are level with each other. If you haven't seen one of my tutorials before, you notice there's a red indicator close to the center of mass indicator. That red one is the center of mass when the fuel is completely drained out of the aircraft. It's from the mod RCS Build Aid. It's very helpful when I make airplanes because I don't want my center of mass to shift much during the flight. And that is especially true when you're making helicopters or airplanes that are capable of vertical liftoff. Now I'm making some adjustments to the main wings. I did increase the angle of incidence on the main wing. And I'm going to add a couple more wing parts. I want my center of aerodynamic pressure to be moved forward just a little bit more. Right now, the center of mass is pretty far in front of the center of aerodynamic pressure. That means the craft will fly okay as it is, but it won't be as maneuverable as I'd like it to be. 
so I'm going to be making a few more adjustments to get my center of aerodynamic pressure to be closer to the center of mass. So I'm going to continue making a few tweaks to the exact shape of the wing. I'm also going to fill that back fuel container with oxidizer that I'm not going to use. That will move my center of mass back just a little bit. These changes will just make the craft more maneuverable and in general fly more like a fighter aircraft. For the past more than half a year, I've been making lots of fighter aircraft in this game with my Cold War series. Now that Kerbal Space Program 2 is out, I've been playing with it some. Mostly, I am waiting for the first patch to come out and fix a few things. Because, as of right now, the game just mostly leaves me frustrated. Now, for the finishing touches on this aircraft, I'm going to go ahead and put my Echo 3 mark on the wings. Custom flags can also be put into Kerbal Space Program 2, but you have to mod the game a little bit to do that. And I have been holding off on modding KSB2 at this point, mostly just waiting for that first patch to come out. Right now I'm adding a few auto struts to the aircraft just to help it be a little bit more rigid as it flies around. This is a feature in KSB1 that I hope makes it to KSB2. Okay, let's try testing this aircraft out. Make sure SAS is on and we will use the one action group to transition the aircraft over to vertical takeoff mode. Next, we will throttle up basically all the way and adjust the deployment angle up around one degree. And the vertical takeoff part is working. I need to take it easy as I slowly transition from vertical flight to horizontal flight. As I transition, I'm also slowly decreasing the deploy angle on the rotor blades. If I try to switch between horizontal and vertical flight too quickly, I will end up losing control of the aircraft. Alright, let's see if I can slowly transition back to vertical flight mode. I have to be very careful to keep the jet engine and the rotor fans balanced. This can be especially tricky as the rotor blades are more responsive than the jet engine. So to land, I will need to decrease my throttle on my engine a little bit and decrease the angle on the rotor blades a little bit. Now in my case, I am flying with a joystick so that helps me out just a little bit with the controls. I have the translation control groups bound to my hat, so I am controlling all of that with my right thumb, while my left hand controls the main throttle. But overall, I'd say it works. I'm Echo 3, and I'll see you next time.